Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share um, our work with you. Uh, the name of my presentation today is um, Let Stories Breathe uh, and a Digital Perspective, together with using autobiographical learning for student engagement. Okay, sorry, I have already been introduced, so I'll just skip that slide. Okay, so in terms of stories and getting to know one another. In the world that we live in, um, you know, Chimamanda Adichie says very clearly that the problem with stereotypes is that they are not untrue, but that they are incomplete. They make the one story become the only story. And as educators, we feel that it is so important that all our students are heard. And what I'm going to do with you today is just share a little bit of our story and how we have incorporated digital storytelling into our curriculum and uh, giving our students a voice. So I'm part of a bigger digital storytelling project at CPUT that has been ongoing since 2000. 2010. And we define digital storytelling as the process of creating a personal narrative that documents a wide range of culturally and historically embedded lived experiences by, compare, uh, by combining voice, sound and images into a short video developed by non-professionals with non-professional tools within the context of digital storytelling workshops. Uh, what is important here is to note that these digital skills that we teach our students are, are really non, not professional. We're not out to make videos or movies that are Hollywood standard. It's more about giving students a voice and allowing them to tell their stories. In conjunction with this, we have also developed uh, at CPUT ethical guidelines for digital storytelling in higher education. And these guidelines are for uh, research, for teaching and learning, and for community engagement, and can really be uh, used by anybody who wishes to engage in digital storytelling. Um, the focus of this talk is not about the ethical guidelines, but the link for the guideline document is in the, um, the document that Analda created. So please feel free to have a look at that before you start any digital storytelling project, just to acquaint yourselves with, um, you know, sort of the ethics behind it. And I'll explain why now. Okay, so let's get into talking about digital storytelling as a tool for teaching. The most important thing that, that I've had to learn is that digital storytelling is a process. As a matter of fact, the digital part of it is what comes last. It's, it's more about getting the students to tell a story in two minutes because a digital story should never be longer than two minutes. And there's a lot of planning and writing that goes into it before you start recording. So I, there is a digital story telling process that one can follow, which really relates back to coming up with an idea, exploring the idea, writing the script, planning, and then once all of that is done, create gathering the, the images that you want to project uh, to tell your story, uh, recording the audio and the video, and then putting it all together and then sharing it. It's so much more than just about the tools that you use as well. We also want our students to develop digital literacy. So it's also about the skills that we teach them. It's not only about the, the, the transfer of knowledge, it's about the amplification of our voices. And it's not about creating media, media it's about meaning that is created and contributing and collaborating and connecting. And finally, digital storytelling is all about transforming. So just a quick note on the elements that have to be present within a digital story in order to make it work. The first uh, point that needs to be considered is point of view. Students need to be aware or anybody who's creating a digital story need to be aware of the fact that their own personal point of view needs to come across. This is a digital story about myself. Um, you use the, the first person narrative and you, you, you put your story out there. 
digital stories always work well if they start with a dramatic question that the story then answers. And it is usually linked to emotional content. You will find that given the opportunities, students will always want to tell a story that is close to their heart. The next uh, point is that digital stories are like vignettes. They are short. So economy is incredibly important. A digital story, as I said, should not be longer than two minutes. And it should, with a dramatic question, have some sort of punch to it. And, for, and then the, the, the next uh, three points re are related to the actual creation of, this, of the story. It is essential that when the student tells their story, that they use their own voice. So not only are they telling it from their own point of view about an emotional incident or using emotional content, their voice is important physically and metaphorically. Digital stories also work well if there is a soundtrack involved, which is music that is played quietly in the background. Unfortunately, this uh, presentation doesn't include how to create digital stories because that is actually a three day workshop. But um, it's something to note that when planning the digital story that the music that is played in the background doesn't overwhelm the student's voice. And then the last point is pacing. Students need to be taught not only how to write the story, but how to voice the story, pausing at certain moments, uh, creating emphasis in, with their voices. So you can see that the digital storytelling process is, is all about storytelling, writing their own story. So writing skills are at, at, um, at advanced or, um, you know, sort of put to the, to the fore. Um, pacing in terms of vocalizing and speaking, that is also a skill that is uh, demonstrated. And then, of course, the um, actual digital skills in putting the story together. <clears throat> so the question now is, but how do I do it? So the way that I do it in my class is I use the uh, overarching theme of autobiographical storytelling in my classroom. So autobiographical storytelling is basically storytelling the curriculum and allowing students through storytelling the curriculum to add lived experiences to the content that they are learning in order to understand it better. So I'm going to give you a few examples about what I mean, and uh, hopefully then it will make a little more sense. So um, one of the examples that we've used uh, at CPUT in the Faculty of Education is that the, the education students have a subject called professional practice. And in this, uh, there's a sub uh, section of this subject, uh, which deals with uh, educational psychology. And in that subsection, they deal with the topic of adolescence. So after uh, negotiating with the uh, subject lecturer, I did a digital storytelling project with that class where they were asked to interview uh, a grandparent or a parent and then compare their experiences of adolescence with the student's experience and to look at sort of differences between how their grandparents experience their adolescence compared to what the students uh, uh, use it, uh, uh, experience it. And then to create a digital story of a incident either in their own uh, adolescence or in their grandparents' adolescence that they felt, you know, that, that they felt moved them. And then they were, they were able then to link their own personal experiences with the content that was being taught regarding adolescence, therefore storytelling the curriculum. Another uh, project that we did was an art appreciation project with our art students. And we asked the students to, that they were being taught the skill of analyzing paintings, art appreciation. And they were taught very specific skills in this class. And together with the art lecturer, we developed uh, the digital story uh, workshop and, and they were asked to identify a symbol in the painting that spoke to them. And for example, one of the, the students uh, looked at a painting by Penny Siopus and saw the, the symbol of a bird in the background of this painting and then wrote a story about how after her heart surgery, she felt as free as a bird. 
And then another student looked at the painting uh, called Dora and the Other Woman, where the in the in the painting, the the character or the main person in the painting had photographs pinned to her dress. And these photographs were uh, the only link that that Dora, the character in the painting, had with her children as she was a, a, a domestic uh, worker who lived far away from her children and her photographs were her only link to the children. And the art student looked at these photographs and then wrote a digital story how she how she could empathize with Dora because her mother had been killed in a car accident when she was 11 and all she had was photographs of her mother. So you can see very emotional stuff that came out. Um, we have also uh, developed workshops and, and digital story projects with our journalism stu students at other faculties at, on, uh, at CPUT and students uh, have created uh, digital stories on who am I as a journalist student and, and issues that they wish to bring to the fore. Now at the end of this presentation I've included uh, two of those journalism students' uh, digital stories, as well as one of the art appreciation student stories. Um, but we won't have time to watch them now, uh, but they will be available for you to watch. Um, and another uh, will um, put it up for you on the, on the Google class. We have also done uh, getting to know each other uh, digital stories at, at CPUT in the education faculty, where you know, with, with our, our multicultural, multilingual context, very often there are huge chasms between our students and students don't know each other. They don't know the backgrounds that, that each other comes from. They don't know the struggles that students have. So allowing students to, to tell a story uh, allows them to get to know each other. And it has been quite uh, overwhelming sometimes to, to look at the realization dawning in the eyes of some of the students as to what their fellow peers go through in order to just get to CPUT in order to study. And then another project that we've done, we've got many, I'm just sort of highlighting the major ones, is that we have instituted with the, digit, with, with the District 6 Museum when we do, uh, with our, when our students do the Walk of Remembrance or the Privilege Walk in Cape Town, they get to reflect on the process uh, and they they get to talk about either personal experiences of relatives who were forcibly removed from District 6 or, um, you know, any stories that they might wish to share about how they felt doing the Privilege Walk or the Walk of Remembrance. So it opens up not only a uh, the opportunity to link uh, content with curriculum, but it also allows students to reflect on the history of South Africa and where they find themselves today. So the way that I create, use digital storytelling in my classroom is it's a combination of autobiographical storytelling, digital storytelling elements, and then I also use it for narrative research. Uh, just a quick note, in terms of which programs to use, you know, it's like asking how long is a piece of string. I always say that use something that is free. So Windows, uh, and Microsoft actually has a program that you can download from the internet called Photo Story that is very helpful in, in uh, the way that you can set up your, your photographs, you can put your photographs in an order, you can voice record over the photographs, you can cut and, and, and you can develop, um, you know, a beautiful story using Photo Story. Obviously, sometimes when the students do it, they're not doing it in a professional um, a place where they can record. So sometimes their voices are a bit muffled. But for me, it's more about getting their story out while they're learning to use the digital, uh, in, you know, platform. Uh, we also like using We Video, and We Video is a simple. A program that you can run off your cell phone and you can uh, cut and uh, voice over with Wii Video as well. And Wii Video gives you an automatic video once you have completed the process and it's very easy to load those onto YouTube. 
Uh, then Storybird can be used for creating books. So remember that digital storytelling doesn't only have to be a, a movie. It can also be a digital book that you're creating with, with text and voiceovers. And Storybird is a lovely free uh, program that you can also use. And then to engage your students who are more artistic or perhaps more visual and, and can express themselves better through, through drawing, there's another website called Comic Master, and that allows you to create graphic novels around a story. And it is also one that is for free. Okay, so as I said, there are three videos that are available for you to watch. I've also uh, put on a uh, recording of um, how I use uh, digital storytelling. So it's a very short, I think it's about a seven minute uh, recording. And then I have a story from the art students, which you can also look at. But my last piece of advice to you is to be vulnerable. When you are teaching storytelling, it is really difficult to expect students to tell you a story if you yourself are not telling a story. Now, this, this can cause a lot of problems for lecturers because they don't want to be seen as vulnerable to their students because they feel it might compromise their professionalism. So I, say, I always say share a story that, that, that you don't mind sharing. And uh, I've included a story that I created that I always show my story to my students just to break that barrier and show them that it's okay to share a story. And I have uh, tattoos and I very often get asked by my students, you know, why do you have tattoos or is it appropriate to have tattoos or, you know, those types of questions. So I thought that I would create a digital story about why I have my tattoos. And it, it sometimes is quite an eye opener for the students to sh when I reveal the vulnerabilities that I do, but also it helps them to know that it is a safe space for them to create their stories and to share their vulnerabilities with me too. Um, I have a number of references that are also available in the, in the, pro, um, the presentation. So please feel free to click on any of those and uh, also uh, research that we have conducted regarding our digital story project. We have the published ethical guidelines and we have a chapter and an article that was published uh, regarding uh, specifically the, the ethical issues around creating digital stories. But um, that is the end of my presentation. And I would like to say thank you for listening. And uh, yes, I welcome any questions.